Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you various ways on how to create zebra stripes. So I'll be going from the easiest which will be silk screens and makume gane all the way up to the more tricky sort which is the canes. And we'll be using uh, one of these techniques today whichever one um, I prefer. Um, in a later project. Okay, so first you're going to need a sheet of white clay and I've just chosen to use Primo today. And now I am of the opinion that a zebra is white with black stripes and that is just my personal opinion so I'm going to be using white clay as my base today and black paint as the stripes. So I'm going to bring over the silk screen that I have chosen to use today and it is from createalong.com and it is the Wild Things silk screen. And here is what it looks like and so you can see we've got a few animal prints, probably a crocodile one over here and a leopard one over here but this one looks like quite a nice zebra print, it could even be a tiger print but we'll use it as a zebra print today. So this is the one that we are going to be using and you can get it from here. Okay, and I'll provide a link in the links below if you want to check it out. Um, it would be super helpful if you could go through that link. Okay, anyway, what we want to do, got the wrong way around there, is you want to pop your silk screen down and you want for create a long silk screens, it says that it needs to be the orange side down. So now I'm just going to smooth this on and just make sure that it is properly stuck on here eh? because you don't want it um, moving. Okay, once you've done that you need some sort of card that is going to help you uh, move the paint across and so I'm going to be using this one and you also want paint and because we're doing zebra today I'm going to be using black paint and I like um, a paint with the consistency between runny and thick. I don't like it too thick, but I don't like it too runny either. And so you'll just paint a bit over the side like this. Then you'll take your squeegee and move it across. And then I like to take this and scrape it off. Let me just wipe that off. I don't like having excess paint. There you go, because we don't want excess paint on the silk screen. So I like to take the card and wipe it over the surface like that until I get rid of most of the excess paint. Then I take like to take my finger and make sure that I get into all of those gaps. Just like that. And now because my paint isn't too thick, um, it doesn't dry too quickly, which is nice. I'm just going to take this and make sure that that paint's nice and level. Okay. Just want to make sure that that's level. There we go. Okay, now we're going to lift it up and there's what it looks like. And now what I want to do is I want to pop this into some water instantly and then I'll show you what to do when I've finished rinsing it. Okay, so now that I've cleaned that off, I'm just going to trim up over here. And now if you look closely, you'll see that the pattern is feathered slightly. And now that's mainly because of the paint I chose to use. I like when I'm making animal print silk screens I like to use fairly cheap paint and so it kind of forms almost like water droplets on the top of the clay and I like this because it gives it almost a furry look but if you were doing other silk screens you'd want to use a more quality paint and this would give you a much crisper image so let me just bring that up so you can see that feathering hopefully and that's entirely up to you Okay, so now I'm going to put that aside to let dry and that is by far the easiest way to make a zebra print. 
um, but you of course do need a silk screen for it. So you can get the silk screen at createalong.com but now I want to show you how to do it using a texture stamp and I'm going to be using uh, my zebra texture stamp and this is the reverse one. My re the reverse one is my favorite um, because it just creates a more bulky pattern which is quite nice for things like makumegane. So what you'll need is a piece of white Prima and you'll just lay the stamp that you've chosen on the clay and just trim up that area because you don't want to waste clay. So I'm just trimming up around it roughly, you don't, want, don't have to have it exact but you do want it to be about the size of your stamp. There we go. And that will save you quite a bit of clay. And this was run out on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. Now what you want to do is bring over a sheet of black. And this was run out on the thinnest setting of my pasta machine. So I'm just going to place that over the white and smooth that out to get rid of any air bubbles. Just like that. And then just trim up the excess. Now all of these techniques that I'm showing you can be applied in other techniques. So um, anything that you really want to catch an Im capture an image with. But I just thought that would be nice for me to show you multiple ways of getting a zebra stripe um, because I've had a lot, quite a few requests over the past few months for zebra prints and so I just wanted to show you guys. Okay, so now I'm going to run that through my thicker setting on the pasta machine. Just to thin it out a little bit more. And I've got a little bit from my pasta machine there. Just want to get rid of that. There. Okay, then you'll bring over your texture stamp and a bottle of water. And just spray the surface of your stamp and because this is made from polymer clay I have to spray it quite heavily then place this black side down onto your clay oh, excuse me onto your stamp then spray the surface of your clay to prevent it from sticking to your fingers and then just press it in to your stamp working from one side to the other. Just like that. Okay. Now I'll lift that up and I'm just gently going to work it out of the stamp. There we go. So now you can see that we have left an indent. So now what we want to do is we want to dry this and the tile up and then we're going to shave this top surface to make it white. There we are. Now gently press your piece onto your tile so that it sticks and bring over a blade. And now I'm just going to trim up these edges because I don't need those. Not at the moment anyway. There we are. Gently pat that down to make sure it's stuck. And then I want to start shaving. So we reveal the white part. Now you just want to be careful to shave off the raised areas because you only want the white part showing. Ah, excuse me, you only want the white part on the raised areas. So this can take a little bit of patience. And if you make a mistake, don't worry. But do try to get it as perfect as possible. You want all those black bits gone. And so you can see that the pattern is already starting to take shape. And so I'm going to spend a little while doing this, making sure that I get it as best I can. Okay, so that is what it looks like now. So now I'm going to bring over my roller and I'm going to flatten it out. I'm going to roll first the one way and then the other way. Just 
just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And now you can leave it like this if you want to. But I want to just do one last thing to make it look more like a zebra print because um, I'm looking for a furry look. So what I like to do is I like to bring over a needle tool or just something with a sharp end. And now you want to choose which way you want the fur to be going because it can't be going in both directions. So I think um, it needs to be going this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be going in about the same direction. And now this is completely up to you. But you do want it to have it all in the same direction. You want them all somewhat parallel to each other. You don't want perpendicular lines. Okay. And now I'm going to go in the opposite direction this way, which will also be fine, just as long as you're not going that way. And this is going to make it look a little bit more furry, I guess, which is what I want. Because it, it looks a little bit plain on its own. And so I'll continue doing this. And I'll go in the opposite direction as well until I am happy with how it looks. And then I'll show you what it looks like and then we can plan it out. And then you'll see how it looks compared to last time. There we are. Now I'll bring over our roller again. And we'll gently roll this flat. Now you don't even have to roll it flat if you want. You can leave those... Uh, stripes as texture if you wanted to which I probably would like but I wanted to show you what it looked like flat so you can see now we're flattening it out there you are, that's completely flat it's got quite an interesting look to it now I've just got a few areas where the black is transferred onto the white and we don't want that and now you can either choose to shave it away now, like I am, which can be a little tricky. Um, or you can wait till later when you start sanding. But anyway, that's what it looks like, and so that gives a little bit of a different effect. And so that's the second option. And so here's the other one, I'll just bring this over. And so you can see there it looks a little different. Um, your salt screen will, will be a little bit more... Um, it, it, it won't get distorted and so it will look less organic. So you can choose between these options but they both do require tools. And so now I want to show you how to do it um, just with clay. And so I'm going to show you how to make a zebra cane. And so you're going to need a bit of black and quite a bit of white and now I kind of want to copy this pattern that I've made over here because zebra stripes aren't all just going in one direction as you can see over here they're going in many different directions so I kind of just want to copy this pattern and you can too if you want to um, just so that I can keep it similar and more realistic. So we'll start with the black. And so you want to roll this out into a log. I'll just chop off a segment. And I'm going to form this into a rectangle. And now I'm going to dictate how thick my cane is going to be. So how much I have to pinch when it comes to reducing and this is about how thick how high it's going to be so now this is my stripe so now I'm going to see which area do I want the stripe to be I think that will be the stripe and so you'll also notice that some areas of the stripe are a little bit thinner than others and some are a little bit thicker so just pinch your piece of clay so that it has um, variations in thickness and so you don't want to be putting your pieces through the pasta machine because then they'll all be the same thickness and then it won't look 
quite as good. Okay, so that's the one stripe there. Now I'm going to do another stripe, the other stripes over here. So you'll take another segment, pop into a rectangle, squish it out, the side where it is going to go. And just make sure that it is the same height as this one. That is the only thing that you need to keep uh, consistent. Your thickness can change, but you want it to be about the same height. Okay, and that will be that stripe. And then I'll just continue laying out all of these stripes until I have all of the black pieces. And then I'll start showing you how to create the white pieces. Okay, so I've done enough of the black that I can start to piece the cane together because it actually gets a bit easier that way. So, done that, now I'm going to bring over the white. Now just while I'm doing the white, I just want to point out a fact that it can help a lot when cre creating one of these canes. Um, and this applies to leopards, zebras, tigers and any other sort of animal print that you want. It helps a lot to go onto the internet and type in um, whatever animal you're looking for and then print. So in our case you would type in zebra print. Or you could type in pattern instead of print, so it would be a zebra pattern. And then you would come up with a whole bunch of photos, choose the one that you like, paste that into a Word document, print it out, and then use that, like I'm using this veneer over here, to help you uh, plan out your piece. And I'm telling you, it helps a lot. You have a lot less um, problems. Okay, so you'll just take your white, just like any of the other ones that you've made. And we'll paste that down there. And I just want to show you a few. So it's going to basically be a repeat of the black. But I do want to show you what I'm doing. So it'll be a little bit of a repeat. But that's okay. And we're going to use the cane, I've decided in a cool project that will be coming up very soon so keep a look out for that one I think it will be coming up next week or if not next week the week the week after okay that's a little bit too long too thick and we can always trim this to shape later on and I like to have the white um, in case the black like that so I've just pinched over the sides and we'll just trim up these sides later on okay then we'll bring over this other piece of black and I'll pop that over there just like that and now I want the white pieces to be thicker than my black pieces because I want the black to appear to be the stripes and so you can see here if you look closely that the white bits are thicker than the black and so it gives the appearance that the black is the stripes there you go and so I would just continue doing what I'm doing now for the entire cane. Just every now and then I'll trim up these sides. Just trim up a little bit there, trim up a bit there, just to help us keep it nice and neat. And then I'll just continue doing this for our cane. And then I'll show you what it looks like once I have finished assembling it. And now in some areas what you're going to need to do, like over here, um, this stripe is supposed to be going straight on like this and so you're going to need to take a piece of white and create a sausage for each side and place that in there. I'm just going to mould that into kind of a teardrop shape like that. bit sticky. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so I have finished the cane and I've tried to keep it in a relatively rectangular shape as you can see. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on each of these sides just to condense all of these pieces together. And I've also just trimmed the sides as well as you can see because I had a few bits hanging over. Okay, now I'm just going to take my roller. I'm going to flatten out this front and back just to get all of those pieces nice and together. And then I am going to start reducing. And I'll go a little bit slowly with the, redu with the reduction. You want all your clay to be about the same consistency so that it reduces nice and evenly, which is quite important, especially when you're working with one that is this short to reduce. If it was a little bit higher, it would be easier to reduce, but then it uses up quite a bit more clay. Okay, and just flatten out the top and the back every now and then as you reduce. And I'm just rotating, squishing, rotating, squishing and so on. And you can see that it's already almost doubled its height. And I don't want to reduce it down too much. Just want to reduce it enough that it's going to squish everything together. And we can use it in our project. Okay, there we are. Now I'll take a slice and see how it looks. Oh, excellent. It turned out really well. Okay, so it's a little bit warm and so you can see that it's smudged a bit. Now I just want to chop off this end so I can see where the distortion is. There we go, that one's cut a bit cleaner. So I can see there's a little bit of distortion here that I need to trim up. There we are. Okay, and that's what it's going to look like. And so you can see that looks quite nice. Okay, and so that is what we are going to use in our uh, project next week, or the week after, depending. So you can see that the pattern is very similar. I want to just trim up the side over here. Or it might just be that there's a bit of distortion there. No, that side needs to be trimmed up. Just gently gonna. It's a little sticky at the moment, so. There we go. Just wanna trim up that side. I'll probably trim up this side as well. Because now that I've reduced it, I can see um, that there's a little bit of distortion on the edges. So I do want to just trim up those edges. Okay. And then I'll square it back up again. And there we go. That looks much better now. Much more tidy. So I'll bring over my roller and just square up these edges. And then we want to let this rest for a good day or so before we actually use it because it's quite soft because I've been working with it a lot. And as you can have seen already, it doesn't slice very well. But I just want to slice it to see what the pattern is because I can't wait 24 hours for that. But there we are. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So, that's the other way that we can make a zebra pattern. So we have these three different ways of making it. And now there was one other one that I actually thought of while I was making this cane. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to put these all aside and I'm going to bring over a piece of white and I'm going to roll this into a sheet. Okay, so this is going to be a more abstract sort of zebra pattern. And so I've run out my sheet of white on the middle set of my pasta machine, which is a four for me. And I'm just busy trimming it up. You're also going to need a sheet of black and I have rolled mine out on the second thinnest set of my pasta machine. Just trimming up that white and I'll just position it there which is a nice spot for you guys to see. Okay and then here is the black and so what I want to do is I'm just pop it over there so you can see. I'm going to take a piercing pin and I'm actually going to use it to trace out some stripes which I'm then going to add to my white. And this is just another way of doing it. Here, let me see if I can pop it there. There you'll be able to see it much better there. Okay, 
and then I can lay that where I want it. Now this is my least favourite but it is still quite effective and so you guys can try that out as well if you didn't have didn't want to make a cane and you didn't have a stamp or a silk screen. There we go. Just make sure that you do give the pieces a bit of personality. There you go. And I'll just continue adding it. There we are. And so you can see that it's a little bit more rudimentary compared to the other styles. Um, you could spend more time and make these slices a bit thinner and the pattern maybe a little bit more complex. And then once finished you could either choose to leave the pattern raised or you could flatten it out with your acrylic roller. But personally I'm not going to use it and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off these black bits but that's basically what it would look like so that's basically it and so I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know as that is always helpful to me and please do look out for the tutorial which will be coming up soon using this cane that we made and whenever we do do the tutorial, please note that you don't have to have the cane. You can use either of these ones um, that I have shown you for the tutorial. And so I look forward to showing you that tutorial. And please do check out my Patreon account or Etsy. I have my own tools and supplies on my Etsy shop. I have cutters and texture stamps like the one that I showed you today. I also have a bunch of cutters. I sell my tutorials there and my jewellery so please do check that out as that would be very helpful to me and please do check out Patreon I release videos every single month um, and you'll be able to have all of the backlog and by the time this video goes out I should have about 8 months backlog there so you should have about 24 videos to watch on there so it's quite a bit and so please do check that out as that would be very helpful to me and as always I hope to see you in the next tutorial Bye for now.